Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. In this episode we will look at the precision measuring tools that we use in my shop classes, uh, specifically dial indicators. I have four different type of dial indicators here uh, with four different mounting bases and levels of precision and I'm going to take you through the operation and care of each one of these uh, dial indicators. Now my favorite dial indicator that I use all the time uh, in my shop classes is this magnetic mount dial indicator. So there are two different types of magnetic mount dial indicators. This one has a base that adjusts to the shape of whatever car part you want to stick it to magnetically. This one just has a flat base and must be stuck to something that is flat, which on an automobile there's not a lot of uh, flat steel parts that you can stick a magnet to. So let's take a look at this one. This is, the, this is from Snap-on, it's part number GA3645. Uh, they are expensive, but it's a wonderful kit. I've had this one for going on eight years now and it works just as well now as it did uh, when I purchased it. But one of the reasons it, it works as well is I treat it with care. Now you notice when they open the box it has a couple of pieces of foam in here. The little piece of foam goes over the dial indicator itself. The rest of these go over, or the other piece of foam goes over the rest of the parts in the box and that keeps things from uh, rattling around and coming out of place when you're carrying the the box around. So don't set these pieces of foam in oil or throw them away or anything because I need them put back in the box when you're when you're done with it. Um, all right, in the box itself, we have two clamps that go on two different rods. Each of these rods has a different diameter. So this is a large diameter rod. This is a small diameter rod. And there is a large diameter clamp that's going to go on this one and a small diameter clamp that goes on this one. Uh, sometimes my students will swap those around or try to swap them around and wonder why it's not fitting or working and, and that's why. They're two different sizes. Okay, so let's set this off to the side for a moment and let's just look at the, the magnetic base itself. The magnetic base has a lock on one side. If we unlock that by pulling this lever back, it has all of these little fingers that will stick out the bottom. So I always unlock it to begin with and stick all these little fingers down and out. And then these fingers can take the shape of whatever part you want to stick the magnet to. Uh, so for example, uh, over here on this vise, we have a rounded end here. I can just stick that right to it and it, it can be at any angle that I want to, to get it set just right and then you use the locking lever here on the end to lock it in place and hold it tight. So that's one of the things I really like about this magnetic base dial indicator is this base that fits to the shape of whatever part you want to stick it to. All right, there's a magnet up inside of, of these two rows of uh, little fingers. That magnet sometimes comes or wants to come out when you push the, push the little fingers in. If that happens, just push back down on the magnet and pull the little fingers back back where they where they go. All right, let's see how we hook up the rest of the parts of the dial indicator. So I'm just going to stick this on the bench uh, right here. I've got a stainless steel top so it doesn't stick really well. 
but I'm going to lock it in place uh, anyway. And then I've got the clamp that goes on the large diameter shaft here. So I'm going to put that on here. I'm putting the clamp on the small diameter shaft. So there's a hole right here on the other side of the clamp. And that's where this small rod is going to come in. Just like that. And we can position that at any angle, height, uh, and length that we want. So I'm just going to put it like right here. And then we just lightly, with our thumb and finger, tighten that down enough that this won't move anymore versus the, the large rod. We, we do not put pliers on there or give it a whole bunch of uh, power in, from muscles or, or whatever else you, you might be using to tighten that up. This is just a plastic uh, knob on the end here and it will break and I have had students break these uh, trying to tighten it down um, tighter than it needed to be. It's just a, just a small amount of clamping force is all it needs to hold it in place. Okay, this other clamp here for the small rod can be put on two ways. We can have the thumb screw on, on one side, or we can flip it around and have it on the other side. And of course you can rotate it, but that also puts the clamp at the bottom or the top. And depending on what you're trying to measure, you may want to have it at the top or the bottom just for clearance reasons. So this clamp is going to hold our dial indicator in place. The dial indicator here is a very delicate, very precise dial indicator. Um, if we look in at the face of this dial indicator, each of the little tiny marks, the smallest marks in there is half of one thousandth of an inch. Or, as it shows right there, 0. 0.0005 inches. That's half of one thousandth of an inch. Uh, the, the marks that are just slightly larger are one thousandth of an inch, 0. 0.001 inches. And then the, the larger marks that are numbered are in five thousandths of an inch increments or 0. 0.005 uh, inches. Now the plunger on this dial indicator here has a travel length of one inch. So we can measure up to one inch of movement. Normally though in uh, manual drivetrain and automatic transmission classes, we will only be measuring very small movements, 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe 50 to 100 thousandths of an inch of movement. But this dial indicator goes from zero to 50 thousandths of an inch or 0 0.05 inches in one revolution of the needle on the dial. So in one inch of travel, uh, that is going to spin 20 times. Uh, two times for each 100 thousandths of an inch. There are 10 100 thousandths of an inch in one inch, so the needle will spin 20 times in one inch. There's a little counter right there that'll tell you how many hundred thousandths of an inch you have uh, measured up to that point. All right, these dial indicators are very delicate. If you accidentally drop one of these dial indicators, you can ruin it. Uh, and these are not your cheap $12 Harbor Freight uh, dial indicators. These are jeweled dial indicators, which means they have ruby bearing caps and bearings in them for precision work, precision measuring work that should last the lifetime, your lifetime, if the tool is taken care of properly. Uh, but if you drop this thing, uh, it can be damaged quite easily. So be very careful when you're putting this dial indicator into the clamp on the 
magnetic base or whatever base you're connecting it to because it once again, if you drop it, it can be damaged. And if you do drop it in, in one of my classes, please let me know so that I can see if it's damaged and get it uh, repaired. Now, there's a base right here on the dial indicator that we can clamp to, lightly clamp to, and hold it in place. Um, so that's one way to clamp it here on the dial indicator base. So if I bring this clamp up, and it has the hole right there, I'm just going to stick the dial indicator through. So I'm going to stick it through far enough that some of that sleeve is sticking through at the bottom there. And then I'm just going to lightly clamp that down. And now we've got the magnetic base dial indicator, the large rod with the large clamp, the small rod with the small clamp, and the dial indicator itself uh, all mounted in place. Now, on the face of the dial indicator here, we've got this red outer dial here, and we can zero the dial indicator by moving this outer face one way uh, or the other. Sometimes you'll want to zero it and start at zero and move uh, one direction or the other as you take a measurement with the dial indicator. Other times you'll take what's called a total indicated reading, which you won't need to zero it. You'll just see where it is before you take the measurement and see how many thousandths of an inch it moved after the measurement and just do the math in your head and come up with the measurement. But for beginning uh, users of dial indicators, it, it helps to put it on zero. There's a little thumb screw right here on the side of the dial indicator that if you lightly snug that down, it will lock the red ring from turning. But don't put a pair of pliers on there. Don't um, use excessive force because you'll damage the, the dial indicator. I'm going to loosen the, the base clamp here, the small clamp, a little bit. And let's look at the tip here of this dial indicator. So the, the, the tip of this dial indicator can be removed. You just unscrew it. So there's the tip right there. And the reason you would want to take that tip out is if maybe you would want to put a different tip on. And so if in my classes you remove this tip, then I would like you to take that tip and set it inside of the plastic box that the dial indicator comes in uh, so that we don't lose it. So just set it in there so that, so that we don't lose it. In my dial indicator kits here, I have some extensions right here. These are tip extensions that can be installed. Uh, we can, each of these are one inch in length, and so we can extend the length of the dial indicator plunger one inch at a time, and then there, these are different uh, tips that would go on the end of those extensions. They also sell very long extensions. This one I have not measured, but it looks like it's maybe eight inches long. But if you needed a big long extension to um, go on your dial indicator, then you can buy one of these and screw it in. Screw it in place. They should always just be screwed in by hand and never tightened with a, a pair of pliers because you can damage the inside of the dial indicator uh, if you do that. Let me remove that. All right, the next thing I want to show you is there is a, what's called a contact point kit or set. It's part number 25R from Sterrett. And inside of this kit, it has a 
variety of different extensions, different tips, I'm sorry, not, not extensions. It has a variety of different tips that can go on the bottom of that dial indicator. So we have some, some flat, We have some flat tips, rounded tips, pointed tips, uh, different shapes and sizes. Uh, inside here, there's just a real pointed uh, tip. And then not part of this kit, uh, there's also a roller tip that you can buy if you're uh, measuring something like tire run out on the vehicle. Uh, sometimes having a roller tip rather than a flat tip or a rounded tip uh, can come in handy. So these tips I keep in these boxes in my precision measuring toolbox and we can get those out as necessary in my classes. I'm going to screw the tip back on. So let me give you an example of using this magnetic base dial indicator to measure something. Okay, right here I have a cutaway of a front axle of a uh, Toyota uh, Tundra. And I'm going to use this dial indicator to come in and measure the backlash on one tooth of this dial indicator. So I'm going to take the magnetic base, unlock all those fingers, extend them to the, the length, their maximum length, try to find something that we can stick the dial indicator to. So here's a bracket uh, right here. I'm just going to stick it right there and lock it in place. So now we've got a good solid connection um, to this whole assembly. And now I'm going to use this, the large clamp to loosen up the small rod and get it positioned to where I can come in and get the plunger on one of the teeth of the ring gear here. So I'm going to pre-position the small rod close to where I need it to be. Then I'm going to use the, the small clamp and the dial indicator. And I'm going to use the small clamp and position the dial indicator over one of the teeth. It needs to be at a right angle with the, t the tooth. It can be a little bit tricky. It's going to try your patience uh, to get that set up. But there it is right there. It's sitting on a tooth at a right angle. I'm going to snug down both clamps. Just like that. So let me get this position a little better so you can see what we've got right there. Okay, so I've got the the base attached, the large rod, large clamp, small rod, small clamp, dial indicator, and then the plunger has some travel in it. Uh, it's, the plunger is poking up just a little bit right here, indicating that we've loaded the dial indicator. If this was sitting down flat, that means that we're not touching the part that we want to measure the... Uh, or take a measurement with, and so uh, we would need to move the dial indicator down more if this upper plunger was not ex extended like it is. Now, if we look closely in at the tooth on the dial indicator there, you can see that it's at a right angle with the tooth or whatever it is you're measuring. And the important thing is uh, when you're taking a measurement with a dial indicator, it's very important that that plunger be at, at a right angle, a 90 degree angle with whatever you're measuring. If you get it tilted from one side to the other, your measurement will be wrong and it'll be too small. 
Anything that uh, puts it on an angle will cause that measurement to be too small. So let's take this backlash measurement. And now I'm going to come in and just move the ring gear back and forth with my finger. So we went from zero to about seven thousandths of an inch uh, counterclockwise, which tells us we've got seven thousandths of an inch backlash. And you would have to look up the specification on the vehicle that you're measuring the backlash on to see if that is within specification. So that's the backlash just on one tooth, and there are uh, close to 40 teeth on a typical uh, ring gear. Okay, so that is using a magnetic base dial indicator. When you're finished using the magnetic base dial indicator, I want you to disconnect it, disconnect the base, and if you're going to use it again in my class that very day, then set it very carefully back in the box with the making sure that the plunger is not being compressed or laying on anything solid. If you are done using the dial indicator, I need it disassembled and boxed back up with the foam put back in place just like you found it. So that's a magnetic base dial indicator.